Alright, so in this video we're going to create a very realistic shooting star effect inside Photoshop. I had an email a couple weeks ago, somebody asking how they can go about creating a very realistic shooting star, and it's really quite simple. In fact, it's going to be much simpler to create it in Photoshop than it is to go out there and wait for a shooting star to actually get a picture of it. So, let's get into it. First thing I need to do is, in my Layers palette, you see I've got a just a regular horizontal document here. And the background layer is filled with black. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer above that one. And I'm going to, over here on the toolbar, I've got the black and white foreground color set. I need to flip this. I need to make sure that white is in my foreground. So I'm just going to click this little bent arrow right here. And that will bring white to the foreground. I'm going to go over here and select my brush tool. Now, we need to get a good size brush here. So I'm going to go into the brush picker here. And we're going to go with about a 200 pixel brush. And let's just click in here and see what we get. Well, I'm clicking and nothing is happening. That's because some of these dynamics in the brush options are checked, and I don't want them to be. So some of these brushes in Photoshop, when you click and select it, some of these parameters might be checked on by default. So you'll have to go in here. And you can see that Shape Dynamics is checked with pen pressure applied. Now, I am using a pressure-sensitive tablet, but in this case, I don't want to take advantage of pressure sensitivity. I want a straight, normal brush. So I'm going to uncheck shape dynamics and just close that window now if I click in here again there I get a regular soft brush now I need to change a couple more things about this brush I want to change the blending mode you see the blending mode here is set to normal you can change the blending mode of a brush as well as a layer here are the layer blending modes but I have the brush blending modes I'm going to set it to dissolve and then I'm going to change the opacity of the brush to 50% and this will give me a nice little spatter effect here. Now over here on the very, over here all the way on the right side of the document, I'm just going to, in the empty layer, painting with white, I'm just going to click once right inside that area on the right side, like that. Now, there's that little object sitting right there. I'm going to bring up my free transform by pressing Command or Control T. Then, I'm going to hold down the Control key on a Mac, or you can simply right click directly on this object, and we'll get this little win, uh, menu here, and I'm going to go down to Warp. Now, when you are in the Warp Grid, you can certainly warp the object by grabbing any one of the corner handles or side handles here, but what I'm going to do is actually click in the middle right here. I can actually click inside and move around inside the grid. And I'm just going to click once. I'm going to drag it way over here to the other side. This is why I have this document set very, very long, very wide. So once I drag it over here, press enter, so there you can see what we're starting to get here. It's almost starting to look like a shooting star effect. But we need to modify a few things before we apply it. So I'm going to bring up the free transform again, and then I'm going to go back into my warp. And I'm going to grab these inside handles here and just kind of push them toward the center just to narrow out the edge or the end of this little shooting star here. And I'll just press enter. Now... I'm going to go over into my Layers palette and duplicate this layer. And I'm going to scale this a little bit. I'm going to bring up the Free Transform, but now I'm going to change something here. Over here in the Options bar, you see this little grid right here. Well, this determines where your center point is. The center point represented by little crosshairs right here. So I want it, want it to be over here on the left side in the center to this point right here. So if I click on that, you can see that that center point has jumped over there. Now, I'm going to hold down my Option key, Alt key on the PC, and simply grab this middle handle and scale in inside. And because I'm holding down that Option Alt or Alt key, it's bringing the other side in proportionally. So we get a smaller shooting star within our big one. Where it's kind of a double trail here. Just to enhance the realism of the effect. Just kind of center that in place. So there we have what's beginning to be our shooting star. We need to add a couple more effects in here. But go back to that original layer. So here we have our small one and the big one. So on the big one, I'm going to double click on the layer icon here, bring up my layer styles, and I'm going to apply an outer glow. Now I want to do a blue outer glow, just so it kind of picks up the hint of a blue, bluish night sky. So we'll get that blue color, and I'm going to increase the size quite a bit here, and maybe raise that opacity just a hair. You can see what we're getting here. It's getting kind of got, got mystical glow about it. And we'll hit OK. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing to that other layer. I'm going to double click on its layer, bring up the layer styles, apply the same outer glow, but I'm going with a warmer color this time. I'm going to go with a reddish color just so it gi really gives off that really burning, it's really burning into the atmosphere kind of look to it. Let's drop that opacity down a little bit. We'll go with soft light so it's not so harsh. And there we have that. So, there I've applied the glows. Everything looks pretty good, but I don't want to merge these layers because I may want to go back and change some settings. But I do want to go ahead and apply it on my sky image just to see how it looks. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my shift key and select both layers. And then I'm going to go into that layers panel menu and go over here to new group from layers. This will allow me to let's give it a name. This will allow me to move the object around basically as one, but inside that folder are both of those layers. Still editable, can do whatever I want with them. So now I have an image of a star field here. I'm going to go back into my original star field layer or shooting star image here, and I'm going to click and drag the group right into my other document here. And there we have our shooting star. I'm going to bring up free transform because I'm going to scale it. Obviously, it's a little big. We'll scale this down a little bit, and I'm going to click right around the corner. You see I get the little bent arrow icon there. That allows me to rotate the object. And we'll just kind of put this in place. And look at that. We have a shooting star. I could even duplicate the group. And we'll just drag this over here and bring up the free transform again and scale it down. So we can have a whole bunch of different shooting stars all coming down the same time. But you can get the idea of how you can take a simple brush stroke and warp it like crazy to achieve a completely different effect altogether. So there you have it, creating realistic shooting stars in Photoshop.